morning, everybody. You are listening to K Talk Radio, 1640 AM. This is the show, Utah Home Sweet Home. I am your host, Yoshi Shiraki. And today we have our special guest, Matt Atkinson, who is going to be sharing some good stuff with us. If you have ever wondered why you struggle hitting your goals, or in general, people struggle hitting their goals, then you are definitely going to want to pay attention and listen. On today's show, we are going to be talking about setting goals and more importantly, how to accomplish them. All the listeners out there, including myself, including Matt, including pretty much everybody out there, professional athletes, professional actors, businessmen, you know, a lot of us in general will hit goals, but the, or will set goals, but the big trick, obviously, is to hit the goal. So, we're going to go over how can you hit your goals. Think about all the New Year's resolutions you have set but did not accomplish. So we're going to go on how to do that. But we're also going to discuss on how to stay driven because, you know, when the going gets tough, a lot of people stop. That's when they quit. And so it's important to know how to stay driven so you can push through the you know, heartache and through the pain. And we'll also be going the importance of finding someone who's already achieved your goal to help you. Because if somebody's already been down that path, has already gone through the struggle, they're gonna be able to teach you a shortcut on how to get there, all right? So, let me tell you a little bit about my guest. First of all, thank you, Matt, for joining. Thank you, Yoshi, I'm excited to be here. Awesome, awesome, perfect. Okay, thank you so much. So Matt started his career, and this is why, Pay attention to this bio, because this is why I invited Matt to come on the show, because there's no one better out there at setting goals and crushing goals. Um, Matt Atkinson started his career in real estate 17 years ago as a mortgage professional and has been investing for the last 15 years. He purchased his first investment property in 2004, a single family home through a short sale, which is a rental unit he still owns today. Matt credits his experience with getting him addicted to local real estate investing and now owns over 16 million in rental properties personally and with partners. He has accumulated 25,500 hours of experience, which is nearly seven years around the clock. That's an expert right there. And has personally invested over $1.87 million in rehabbing rental properties since 2004 and an additional $4.5 million in fix and flips since 2008. Matt and his team added real estate consulting to their services. He focuses consulting on a local level with his expertise ranging from rentals, landlording, hard money lending, fix and flipping, assignments, and building wealth as an investor. So without further ado, uh, let me just kind of share. Matt's been learning uh, over the last 12 months from somebody I follow, uh, pretty heavily on, on books, through books, and, and uh, podcasts, and internet, which is Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins has helped some of the most elite athletes, elite entrepreneurs. Um, the list goes on and on on Tony Robbins' resume, LeBron, Tony, Tiger Woods, I mean, it just goes on and on. And now, and now it's Matt, now Matt Atkinson's added to that resume. Wow, that's a great list to be added to. Thank <laughs> yeah. you very much. I thought I would have maybe been before LeBron and Tiger Woods, yes. but just they got to him first, so I'm happy to be on the list. <laughs> that's right. You did have a chance to get to Tony first. You could have got to him in high school. Yeah, that's true. In 1995, <laughs> one of my friends invited me to go to Unleash the Power Thin, and I thought he was crazy. <laughs> and I was like, why would I want to walk on coals? And then, you know, 19 years later, heaven forbid, no, actually 21 years later, then I went to my first event, actually just in March of 2018, and I called my friend during the event, dude, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Why did you not invite me to this earlier? He's like, I did, you jack -A. So I was like, you're right, that's right. So my friend and I actually went to the second event I went to, which was called business mastery in August of 2018 and I was like dude why did you not tell me about this later so that that's our joke so nice. you are correct I was exposed to him in 1995 awesome awesome <laughs> well excellent well Matt you know I follow Tony uh, like as I mentioned I read his books I, I watch his videos on YouTube I listen to his podcast I try and stay educated through uh, a lot of his wisdom because it is very good wisdom over the last year, you've had the opportunity to study with him quite a few times, and 
what would you say were the top three most powerful things that you picked up from studying with Tony and in your opinion why are they so powerful and while you're sharing that I'm going to uh, be making sure the Facebook live is back on so do you it, mind diving it, into that no, that's great okay. so uh, good good question basically I went to my first Tony Robbins event called unleash the power Within in uh, uh, March just of 2018 so next March this coming March will only be two years and as I went to the event, I heard a speaker named Justin Nelson, who's here in Utah, and he's actually going to be speaking at a, a mutual beneficial organization that we serve on called the Utah Valley Real Estate Investors Association in January. And I heard him speak at a, a Women's Council of Realtors uh, luncheon in January of 2018. And I was like, oh my gosh, this guy's amazing. And I already want to go to a Tony Robbins event. So I basically bought a ticket. Um, I text my wife saying, Hey, are you down to go to Tony Robbins? And she's just like, uh, she's, she's, you can always say yes, <laughs> as long as you prep her correctly. Just like anyone, if you prep the people correctly, True. they're going to say yes. <clears throat> I learned that from you. Yeah, thank you. So, yes. <laughs> so uh, I love being married. Right? Yes, yes. So, <laughs> went to my first event, and it was cool. I probably had about 12 or 15 friends go also. Nice. So, we all sat. There was like 15,000 people, and um, I was like, man, this is amazing. At first, I thought it was really weird. <laughs> which it's different. What's, here's the only thing that's really different is he has you change your physiology, which is like body movement, jumping in the air, listening to music, just keeping your, your physiology as positive and impactful as possible. And he says it's 80% physiology and 20% strategy. So that's a really good thing to model in life. So basically after going to the first event, I loved it so much. Um, my wife and I signed up what's called for Mastery University. With Mastery University, they allow you to go to Date with Destiny, which is the show that's on I'm Not Your Guru that he did a documentary oh, right. a couple years ago. That's right. And then also they have what's called Life and Wealth Mastery. So it's basically giving you this tools or keys of how to like just be more present and master your life. With that also, I went with a, a bunch of friends to Las Vegas to what's called Business Mastery. And um, man, I've, I've never been to a business like workshop, seminar, event, summit ever before. Hmm. I've gotten to sales training before, a yeah. lot of sales training. Love, love me some Tom Hopkins. Yes. Been to a lot of sales training. I've gotten to a lot of real estate investing training, but not like a business one. So after going to Business Mastery One in 2018, I then went to Date with Destiny in 2018, and it was an amazing experience. And I actually just barely came back from that same event this Wednesday. And what was different from the first time versus now is um, they have you break up in partners <clears throat> and you're with your partner for like five days straight. Like it's a six day event, but this five days, five, one, two through five, six, you're with your partner the whole time. My partner, this really good looking guy named Steven who lives in Colorado. Um, I wish he was listening to this. But uh, <laughs> like at the end of the day, like the six, sixth day, I I'd I had gotten um, pink eye. Oh no! I got sick like on day th day three. But I was like, I went to that doctor. I actually went to Instacare in Florida and got wow. prescription. But I went back and played full out. But the last day, I said, Stephen, we've been here going on seven days, including travel. Right, seven days of our life. We spent, invested $7,000, 70 hours of learning, and this is no BS. We start at like 11 a.m., and we end at like between 1.30 and 3. Wow. And I'm not exaggerating. In the morning. Like in, the, in the morning. Yeah. And you are going, and it's like this <clears throat> emotional life experience learning from other people. And then I said, at the end of the day, all we want is love. Yeah. And like, we like, we love each other. And, uh... <clears throat> In a bromance kind of way, just like yeah. you and I love each other too. That's right. So what, what's cool with that is this, this journey is then um, also attending, uh, uh, I went to another UPW event, Unleash the Power Within, in March in LA. I, I took my wife, my stepdaughter, some other friends, and then I went to uh, Business Mastery 2 in Amsterdam this summer, and I lived with my family there for six weeks, and I can share a little bit more about that. Yeah, please. But here's a good example of talking about that now. Um, when I decided, they're like, well, this, this event is in Amsterdam. I'm like, freaking Amsterdam? I've only been to Europe once. Like, I went to... I went to uh, Italy. It, uh, I went to Spain first. Oh, okay. Yeah, so here's a good example of Spain and goals. 
And in December of 2017, I was meeting with my top, my lead acquisition uh, uh, on my investment team, Dominic, yeah. who you've worked with yep. this year a lot. And he said, man, I've always wanted to go to see FC Barcelona play Real Madrid. Oh, wow. Okay? And FC Barcelona and Real Madrid had the top two players in, in football or yeah. soccer, yeah. which is, do you know who the top two players in soccer are currently? Off the top of your head? Messi and uh, Ronaldo. Yeah, we both <clears throat> wish we had his abs, right? Yeah. Yeah, either one. Right? <laughs> so Messi and Ronaldo. So I was like, wow, that's actually really cool. And, like, and that'd be like the equivalent of, like, I don't know, the Yankees playing the Dodgers, right? Two big national yeah, 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 markets. Yeah, two big yeah, markets. Yeah, the, I would say more like the Yankees and the and the Cubs. Okay. okay. So story, or the, or the Cubs and the Red Sox. Oh, like sure. Like in the World Series, like these storied yeah. franchises. But also having like Derek Jeter still playing, that's and right. Like Ryan Sandberg of the Cubs from a long time ago, right? Got so it, like right. just these iconic yes. players in their positions. Yes. So my friend Dominic, who works with me, said I've always wanted to go to Spain and go see these two teams. I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. Tell me about it. And he's like, well, they play twice a year. It's called El Clasico. I'm like, well, that sounds like something I'd like to go to. Yeah. So we look it up, and we and we look and see when the date is. And it was like in April or May of 2018. And just, I was like, this is last year. And I'm like, wow, that sounds cool. I think I want to go. <laughs> so here's a good example of like goal setting. My, first, my goal was I wanted to go to FC Barcelona, play Real Madrid, because potentially... Uh, Ronaldo w would be uh, a free agent or could be traded or something the following season. Yep. So, at which he actually left the following season. Amazing. Yeah. So, in talking with Dominic, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to FC Barcelona Real Madrid. So, yeah. here's what I did I wrote it down, right? Yep. So, I wrote it down. Why did I want to do that? I wanted to have an experience that most people don't have. Yeah. And I'm very driven by experiences. Yes. I'm very, lifestyle's really, really important to me. And so I wrote down three action items and I knew what I had to do to do that. Number one is I needed to make sure my wife wanted to go because I didn't want to just go with my buddies. Yeah. I wanted to go with my wife because I thought that'd be an experience we could share together. Yeah. Number two is I needed to make sure we had someone to watch our kids because we didn't want to take our kids in that short trip, never been to Europe before at that yeah. time. And we're like, okay, we got to find someone to watch our kids. Number three. So we decided to get tickets. Oh, right. Of right? course. That's it. Yeah. I can get flights. I can get a hotel. My yeah. My team's awesome. Yeah. They can cover stuff for a week. Yeah. So what was the goal? The outcome I wanted. I wanted to go to the FC Barcelona Real Madrid game yep. for El Clasico. Yeah. Why did I want to do it? I wanted to have that experience for myself and my wife because, quite frankly, I get motivated or inspired by what other people don't do because they choose not to, but I get their idea and I run with it. Yep. And then I established my three action items. So those are examples of like how I do planning. Nice. So I went to, so I gave an incentive with Dominic saying, okay, Dominic, what do you need to do? Yeah. And he told me what he wanted, why he wanted it, and his three action items. He had a lot of momentum, but he didn't hit his outcome. So I went <laughs> and had an amazing experience the first time in Europe. Yep. And that inspired me to go to Europe again because I was like, holy cow. Spain is amazing. You've been to Europe, and you actually lived there, correct? I did. I lived there for nine months. Nine months. Here. Where's your favorite place that you visited when you were in, in Europe? Uh, well, I lived in London, so I fell in love with the city of London. Got it. Did you go anywhere else, or did you stay in London the whole time? Uh, London, Paris. Uh, we actually took off uh, to Greece, um, southern France, uh, ran with the bulls in Pamplona, Spain. Wow. Um, you had some big balls there, huh? <laughs> those, those bulls are huge. They are huge. Huge bulls. Yes. Huge balls. Yes. 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 Both. Yeah. Yeah. I've had other friends and they've taken funny photos of that. So, Got yeah. it. So you're doing things that other people haven't done. Exactly. Okay, cool. And didn't you go see an amazing concert there? Oh, I saw two. I saw Prince and Michael Jackson. Wow. Were they, they, were they dating? They were not dating. It was diff at two different venues. Okay, got it. Michael Jackson was in Wembley Stadium. Wow. I mean, I, I don't. I think that packs over a hundred thousand people in there. Yeah. Prince was a small little arena. I shouldn't say small. Probably like the Delta Center. Okay. Here. Still. Big. Oh, Vivint Arena. Vivint. Yeah. yeah. Still Energy big. Solutions. Uh, yeah, Energy Solutions. Yeah. Whatever they, yeah. whatever the Jazz play. Yeah. Salt Palace. Salt Palace. Yeah. yeah. Salt Palace. <laughs> okay. 
So yeah, so going to Europe is a cool experience. Yes. So <clears throat> how that inspired me with Tony Robbins is <clears throat> going to Business Mastery 2 was in Amsterdam. I'm like, man, Amsterdam? Yeah. I gotta be honest, I never thought of Amsterdam. Only thing I think of is a bunch of weed brownies. Okay? Right. Yeah. Guess what? They're all over the place, okay? <laughs> And the red light district. Are they good? I don't know. I never tried one. I didn't try one. I made sure okay. I didn't eat any brownies. Okay. Yeah, no brownies for me. Okay. So uh, it's a high calorie diet. Yes. So, when I was when I made the decision to go to Amsterdam, I had the same process. I and so I was in Disneyland a couple months later with my wife and kids, and one of my friends named Nudia was living or was traveling in Europe for a couple weeks, and I was like, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. She's in real estate also. She owns a title company here in Utah called Novation Title. There you go, Nudia. It was a drop for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she's very inspiring because she is a definitely go-getter in life. So <clears throat> she was in Europe, and I was like, you know what? I, I woke up from a nap, just like when we went to the football game earlier this year. Yeah. And uh, I get this impression. I'm like, hey, Edie, what if we go in Europe and we live there for like four or five or six weeks, and I work remotely and we take our kids? And she's like, Wow, that sounds amazing, but how do we do that? And I was like, I don't know. I've never done it either. So sure. a good process that I've learned through Tony Tony Robbins and also Strategic Coach uh -huh. and uh, Garrett White from Wake Up Warrior and Dr. Kerry Johnson, who did I did one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching for three years. Nice. Yeah, and, and even Tom Hopkins. It's just what do you want, why you want it, and then three action items. So here's what we did in going to Europe. Number one, what did I want to do? I wanted to go to Amsterdam and go to Europe and visit a bunch of countries for four or five or six weeks. Yep. Why did I want to do that? Because I wanted to provide an experience for my children. Uh, I thought that my team at in, here in Utah was strong and that I, I obviously was gonna work while I was there. I was not gonna just take a six week vacation because you know me, I'd be way freaking bored. So <laughs> That's I wanted, right. That's I wanted right. to live there and work and still be able to produce and have the systems that we're looking for. So here are three action items, and this has to do with goal planning. Yeah. Action item number one, I needed to tell my team in advance that I was doing it, which they were all prepared, and they did an excellent job while I was gone. Number two, I needed to make sure I had tons of technology options with Wi-Fi, international calling, oh, laptops, right. how to log into my email from my phone, from my laptop, internal from other websites, so I could work. And then, number, and then also establish the expectation with my clients, hey, I'm gonna be in Europe, but I'm still available. I'm available from these times. Happy to chat with you anytime on the phone. Please call me. Don't worry about like international plans or anything because they needed to be available. Yeah. And then number three is just establish like a schedule. So we knew we were gonna rotate it based on the business mastery event. So then it was planning, do we, how much earlier do we wanna go? How much later do we wanna go? What cities do we wanna see? And I, I chatted with some friends that have traveled to Europe quite a bit. Um, Nudia is one, uh, a friend my name, a friend named Eric, uh, who owns a mortgage company down in Utah County is one. He travels quite a bit. Uh, my friend Michelle, I actually called her this morning to thank her because I was going to share this story on this radio. And another friend named Angie who travels all over the place, who lives in Puerto Rico. So after we established what we did, we, we went and we went to Europe for six weeks. And, nice. And we went to London, your favorite city, yep. your favorite <clears> dog's <throat> name, and you, and you love London so much, your son. Yeah. We actually should call him Baby Yoda because he's so cute. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> Baby Yoda. Yoda. <laughs> you guys haven't seen The Mandalorian. Baby Yoda is totally Yoshi's son, but Yoshi's son is a little cuter and doesn't have as big of ears, okay? Right. <laughs> Sim similar eyes, okay? Very similar eyes, if you guys know what I'm talking about. So... Um, we established where we wanted to go, so we went to London, and then Belgium, and then um, Amsterdam, and then Switzerland, nice. and then Italy. And what was cool with this experience is there was we were outcome-driven with what we wanted, right? We're right. like, okay, where do we want to go that we don't have to go see everything the first time? But what cities were strategic or similar or had train systems yep. that we weren't going zigzagging all over the place? Right. So from going from London to Belgium, you could take a train. Yep. Going from Belgium to Amsterdam, you could take a train. Going from Amsterdam to Switzerland, we chose to take a flight. Nice. And then from Switzerland to Italy, we could take, could take a train. And I wanted to share this quick example with Belgium. Is Belgium was actually beautiful. Have you ever been there? I've never been to Belgium. Yeah, I, no. I, I would go again. But 
Um, last year, in November of 2018, I missed my favorite heavy metal band, Metallica. Oh. They were in town in November of last year, 2018. And I went to a Keith Cunningham seminar called Planner Get Slaughtered instead. Got it. Which is an amazing person. Uh, Keith Cunningham is Rich Dad from the Rich Dad Poor Dad books. Super smart. Read a, he's written a lot of books. My only book I've read from him is called Planner Gets Slaughtered. Okay. I totally suggest everyone to listen to that book. It's high level about planning. Okay. Perfect. Actually, that's the seminar. It's called The Road Less Stupid is the book. I apologize. What's the, the book called? The Road Less Stupid. Okay. You got to love that one, right? Yeah. The Road Less Stupid. <laughs> So when we were in Europe, I wanted him like, man, what concerts would be kind of cool to just experience? Just like you saw Prince and, and the, key, the, the, the Queen of Pop, Michael Jackson. Sorry, That's right. King of Pop. <laughs> and so we went to a Metallica concert in Belgium, and, and we chose that country because that's we could fit in line with Metallica. Dude, it was amazing. Like, all these Europeans that looked kind of Euro, but like looked like butt rockers yeah. in their 40s and 50s playing Metallica, like, that was a good example of a goal or outcome. Yeah. What did we want? I wanted to go see Metallica in Europe to have a different experience. Why? Because I missed them the previous year in Utah. Okay, so what are three action items I must do? One, go online and see where they're touring, even yep. if they're in Europe, which they were. Yep. Two, check the dates in line with when we were going to Europe yep. to see which ones kind of fell in line. And then three, make sure my wife was cool with it. And she was all she really wanted to, besides have an amazing experience, is go to Italy and in, in, uh, Switzerland, which we did. Nice. So I'm kind of sharing some patterns of goal setting back with Tony Robbins of what happened. So after going to Europe, I then um, went to Fiji for the, the, the finalization of called Life and Wealth Mastery. And that was actually two weeks after I came back from Europe. So the two weeks I came back, I got really, really good feedback from my team with what they needed during the summer, regardless if I was here or not. We made modifications quickly, which is super important and open to hear your team, which I have an awesome team to get feedback from. We made modifications and then went to Fiji and, and during Life and Wealth Mastery, um, they have what's called Platinum Partners. Platinum Partners is basically a, a, a decent investment in yourself for a year to go play around in Tony Robbins' land. Is that you, the highest investment yeah, that he, he has? Yeah, the yeah. highest that mo yeah, the highest that's available, and then they have one tier up within that. But, Got it. But Platinum Partners is like you run around with Tony Robbins' circle for a year, and that allows you to go to every event he has. Nice. In Anywhere in the world. Wow. So there are people, I know a friend of mine that I've met, he will have gone to his 17th event in 12 months next month. Holy cow. And he's been to England, Amsterdam, Australia, Singapore, United States, Spain, Fiji, wherever there's a Tony Robbins event, yeah, yeah. he's going, okay? So, and what's cool with that is it gives you tons of exposure of just people who are living the lives that a lot of us want to do, we yeah. just don't know how. And that's important with modeling. Right. So modeling is finding someone who's already done what you've wanted and are ideally, if you guys want to listen, whoever's writing this down or listening to this, ideally you want to model someone about 20 to 30% farther than you. Because 20 to 30% farther than you, they can still relate to where you're at. Mm. So like someone that's a brand new person that wants to invest in real estate, I don't relate to them as much because yeah. I haven't been brand new for 15 years. Right. Now, I totally know what they should do Yeah. because all the mistakes they're going to make, 90% yeah. I've already done multiple times and I want to help them not have to do that. But I think modeling is extremely, extremely important. And I think we could share, like if we kind of re-evaluate re, re like what we shared right now, is before you model with your outcomes or goals, first, what do you want? Second, why do you want it? And then three action items. And the more specific the action items, then the more specific then we have with how we're going to progress with our goals. And then as we find the people that we want to model, then we can get a better idea of how we can create the life that we're looking for now. Very cool. I want to touch on something that you shared before. You named Keith Cunningham, Kerry Johnson, Tom Hopkins, Tony Robbins, and Garrett White earlier as people you've studied from uh, previously, recently, in the last several years. Yes. 
one, two, three, four, five coaches. Maybe there's more, but those are the ones I wrote down that you named off. And yeah. here's what's so cool is you understand the value of still having coaches at this point in your life with the amount of success you've already had. You know, there are so many people that, like I've, I've got a couple friends out there that their son plays baseball, hockey, football. So they have a baseball, hockey, football coach, obviously with their high school. Then they have a quarterback coach outside privately. Then they have a pitching coach outside privately. And then they have a cardiovascular coach that specifies, depending on the season he's playing, the best type of CrossFit training to mimic the movements that he'll be doing in that particular sport. Number of coaches, there's about five coaches right there just for a high school athlete. And these parents will invest these types of money because they want their kid to be competitive. I don't blame them. I'll probably do the same one day. Right. But then at some point they stopped doing that for themselves, which is crazy, right? They've got all this money invested in coaching for their kids, but then they're not doing coaching for themselves to take their businesses to the next level. Somehow, somewhere, we forget that coaching shouldn't stop, and it just does, right? right. Yeah, it, you're right. And uh, I remember reading a book, Robert De Niro. Um, I was either Al, Robert De Niro or Al Pacino. Um, oftentimes, I get those two mixed up. They're both great cocktails. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was. I was just reading how they still to this day, even though they're you know, regardless of which one it was, the best, some of the best, you know, top ten actors have ever been in front of tele uh, of the screen. They still have a coach, an acting coach, right? right? Yeah. Tiger Woods still has a coach after he was the greatest. I don't know where he's ranked now today, but during his peak, he still had a coach. You know, he Mike, still has one now. He's he come back. He won some. Uh, I think in the mat. I, I don't know which one, but he recently won like a major tournament this year, and it's like everyone's like epic about it. Yeah, yeah. And what's interesting is they didn't graduate from high school, then go to college, and then stop having coaches. Right. They, they kept the coaching thing going on continuously. Okay, cool. So. Um, Thank you for sharing that, uh, but I wanted to kind of like just, I thought that was so cool as you named those names off, I started writing them down because I do know, you know, through conversations that you do study from all those guys, but I never heard them listed like that before, right, right. just randomly. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's talk about that for a second. You, you were kind of just going into that. Can I give an example of modeling and those coaches for a second? That's exactly what okay, I want to talk cool. about. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about the importance of finding someone who's already achieved the goals you're looking for so you can accomplish them and find this individual. You know, you chose Tony Robbins. Um, I chose a gentleman by the name of John Madsen. For people that don't know, I tried to play Division One collegiate football at the age of 40 for the University of Utah. And that was, that was a long winded comment right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I ran you out of breath. A tear in your eye. Yeah. Like, I tried to play, and he did. He had, how about, you did everything you could in your possible powers to try out. Yes, the NCAA rejected my eligibility, which, uh, you know, was the heartbreaker, but I hired a gentleman by the name of John Madsen who played for the University of Utah and then the Oakland Raiders. So I I went and found someone who I could model because he'd already been down that road. So please dive into that. Yeah, you bet. So I'm going to give a couple examples of modeling people that are more successful that those who are listening or will watch this later can have some amazing results. Yes. The first one I'm going to pick is, so I said, who did you, can you, so I said, Keith Cunningham, Garrett White, Dr. Kerry Johnson. Another one is Dan Sullivan was strategic coach. Oh, that's and, right. And I want to share a couple tips on each one with how they're different. And something that I've identified this year is I actually now have a life coach that's included with my platinum partners with Tony Robbins. Okay. And I've never had one before. And oh my gosh, the questions that they ask you about life is very engaging. So like how you and I have a lot of conversations about business, but we also talk a lot about life. Yeah. Like they just ask these amazing questions to like, huh, why am I doing this? Or what could I do different? So with strategic coach, I'll start with that one. Actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going I'm to start Garrett White because I've known him the longest. Garrett White was my college roommate in 2000. That's amazing. And hopefully we can share this with him because he'll laugh. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he was my college roommate in 2000 from probably 2000 to 2001, give or take. And when I first started writing mortgages, which is literally 18 years this month is when I started. So I'm, tw I'm 41 now. I started at the age of 23. He's the first person I brought on my team because you could bring someone on your team. Oh. And we were, we were previously servers. I worked at Chili's and I think he worked at uh, Larry H. Miller. What's the place, the Mexican restaurant in Larry H. Miller? You jump off in the water. 
the Mayan. Oh yeah, the Mayan. Okay? Yes, the Mayan. Okay. So we got we started writing mortgages, and I've been friends with him for a long time. And then he's gone off and done different things, investing, speaking. And he's he's extremely, actually, of everyone that I personally know that if I called on the phone and they would pick up the phone and talk to him, I actually think he is the most trained person that I know as far as him seeking out coaches. Huh. Like he he started way before I did. Got it. As far as like seeking different people yeah. to model. He's extremely talented. So he started something called Wake Up Warrior a while ago. And I actually started Wake Up Warrior in 2015 this month. Wow, four years ago. Wow. So that was my first, like, I was 37, and I've always been, until recently, like, yeah, my life's good. Like, it's good. Like, I do what I want. It's good. But I want to go after... I went from like good to like, hey, I want a great life. And now it's like, I want an outstanding life and I want it all the time. Yeah. Okay. So Garrett White taught what's called black box and he, he focuses on married business owners and, and he focuses on what's called four core before you hit the door. Body balance, being in business. Body it, balance. Body balance, being, okay. being is being, in your head, being. in business. Okay. And it really helped me reevaluate my priorities. And three things I learned from Garrett is one, he's extremely health healthy. Like mm. just in general, your health, like so body's number one. Okay. Right? Like yep. body. So extremely healthy, both physically, what he eats, different things like that. The second thing is he gives these this core four before you hit the door, is if you do these eight things, kinda like your like your rituals in the morning, yeah. you're gonna have a better day. Yeah. Tony Robbins talks about that also with priming. But the, I learned that you can influence or impact other people. So the second thing is he's impactful because he knows who he wants to help. Got it. And then the third thing is he, he's progressing his song, but he's not veering very much from it. Like a lot of people go and switch like he knows what he wants. And he actually introduced me to Strategic Coach. Ah. So while I'm doing Wake Up Warrior for a couple years, I start Strategic Coach. And I'd heard of Strategic Coach years ago. Now, strategic coach is not motivational at all. It's all strategic. Got That's it. why it's called strategic coach. Is it for business primarily? Yeah, it's or? business owners. Okay. Yep. Got they it. have a certain <clears throat> adjusted gross income. You have to hit some income brackets to be able to be eligible to go. Um, it's once a quarter for a day, and it's been awesome. So I've done. I've been involved with strategic coach for three years. I just finished my three-year commitment. I'm going to take a break for 2019 for strategic coach. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I'm you mean? sorry, yeah, 2020. That's yeah. next year, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I want to just play full out with Tony Robbins, yeah, but I'm still reevaluating that. But the point is, I'll go back for sure because it's just one day a week, one day a quarter, right? It's just for a day, yeah. So, with strategic coach, there's three things I learned from that. Number one, and this is important for everyone that's doing planning, they talk about free days, focus days, and buffer days. So, if there's 365 days divided by three. That's 100 and basically 22, give or take a leap year or not. Next year's a leap year. Got it. So they focus on, as business owners, so you don't get burned out, you should take off 122 days a year. Okay. They also give examples of called the lifetime extender. And what they say is, here's a question, fun. Yep. Uh, what, how, how long do you think you're going to live for? Like, pick randomly pick a number, like, I'm going to live to be X. 87. 87. All right, I'm going to write this down because I'm actually hold Yoshi accountable. Okay. <laughs> now, cool. Now, if you're 87 years old, we do this exercise with Strategic Coach. Okay. Which, but if you do this, if you uh, uh, if you live to be 87, what yeah. are five things that you, you're you like, man, if I accomplish these by the time I'm 87, I've had an amazing life. Yeah. What do you think are just five things off the top of your head, Yoshi? Oh, geez. Uh, there's, there would be, for those... For those of them that know me, you know, since I was in high school, I've always had a passion for entertainment. So if I could be on the big screen in Hollywood, that would be one. That's that's a goal that's, you know, never died and just kind awesome. of goes back that's there. That's a great goal. Okay. Um, too ironically, I was chatting with my wife and she chuckled the other night. It was actually last night that I thought, you know what? You got your wife to chuckle last night? I got my wife to chuckle last oh, night. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you and, don't have to email that. <laughs> um... I thought, you know what, I might uh, hire John Madsen again at the age of 48 and train for two years uh, and try again to go play for the University of Utah, but at the age of 50, right? Wow. <laughs> dude, give it a shot, right? Dude, how about, that's awesome. And here's a question. Yeah. What if you actually re-enrolled in school? Well, that's, yes, that's what I'd have to do this time. 
great. Yeah. So what I did is when I when my when the NCAA rejected my eligibility at 42 years old, I then did tons of research to figure out what needed to happen so that I could try out. Uh, and they basically shared that I'd have to be a full-time student for at least a, a, a year. Oh, okay. That's and then, good feedback. Yep. Yeah, and then after being a full-time student for at least a year, that would eliminate the eligibility roadblocks that I ran into the first go-around because now I'm a full-time student at the university and that opens up the door for eligibility again. Mm. So then, uh, at that particular time though, I wasn't prepared to go to, you know, I was 42 and I was like, nah, I'm not going to. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not yeah, going to go good. to college just to play college football. But but by 50, I, I'm kind of getting that, you know, steam going again. Yeah, that's, I, I, that's great. Yeah, I still hang out with some of the friends that I met through that process. Yeah. Uh, Tyrone Smith still plays for the University of Utah. Um, still chat with him regularly. And so the drive is still ironically there, but we won't go into that too much. All right. So that's the second one. Yeah, we should call it the Yoshi Show. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's yeah. pick one more. So... Training with John, how about have a professional trainer yep. and be in a peak physical condition? Sure, yeah. All right, what's one more? Um, I would say the third thing is to be, I did a lot, my parents uh, took me and my sister all over the world when we were younger to travel to see a lot of things. My dad's from Japan, my mom's from Mexico. Wow. So, yeah. Japanese Mexican. Japanese Mexican. Which food do you prefer? You know, ironically, they're both my favorite. Like, I love sushi. If you sushi. only have one, if you're on the Titanic and you're going down, yeah. you only have the last meal. It'd probably be Takashi. Takashi? <laughs> yeah. You're going to bring it with you? Yeah. You're yeah. Like, Takashi, dude, we'll get a life insurance policy on you. It's okay. Yes, I need All the right. box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. The box roll. So, sushi. No, so, yes, the third thing would be to travel with my kids now. Since my parents gave that to me, I want to be able to do that with my kids. International traveler. Yeah. All right, cool. So here's what I heard you say. Is by the age of 87, yep, 87 yep. years young. Yep. Who had an amazing life. All the outcomes, different trials, tribulations, things we're going to experience. Three things you'd like to do. I know we said five, but we'll pick three. Yeah. One is you'd like to be on the big screen in Hollywood. Yep. Now here's the difference. Just let me clarify. Maybe you'd want to be as impactful as the big screen in Hollywood because who knows where tech will be in 20 years. It's true. And I, I didn't think of that until I've been exposed to how much things are progressing in tech. Yep. What, what we're doing now is not going to be the same. Exactly. And just not to cut you off there, but they are doing studies now that the most popular YouTubers are now more famous than most actors. You've got your Brad Pitts. Sure. You've got your Angelina Jolie's. But if you think about it, if you go out to the public society, more YouTubers' names will come off people's, like, who's famous? Right. People are more likely to name a YouTuber, believe it or not, right. than a Hollywood actor. So you're absolutely right. I mean, it, you know. Who knows? What who knows? Who yeah. knows? The second thing is you'd like to be in a peak physical condition. Yeah. Yep. At 87. Fantastic. And then you want to be an international traveler with your kids. Yep. And maybe at that time you might have grandkids. That's true. That's, That's cool, true. right? That's, yeah. So in, with Strategic Coach tying this in of modeling, they then said, okay, if you accomplish all these things, how much longer would you want to live? Oh, forever. We'll still pick another, how much more time? Oh, gosh. I mean, if I could stay at a peak, the biggest thing I think about age that scares me that I've seen people when they get old is they lose their health, right? And then okay. you're just laying in bed. But if I could stay healthy, yeah, I'd love to push over 100. All right. Cool. So 100? Yeah, 100. All right. So here's what's awesome with Strategic Coach. They teach us to think longer so we don't burn out when we're younger. Mm. Ooh, I like that one. I just made that one up. <laughs> they teach us to think longer so we don't burn out to be when we're younger. You guys got that one? All right. With that being said, that's all what we're looking for in life is to have a fulfilling life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we talked about life, uh, free day, focus day, buffer day, lifetime extender. The other comment that I've learned from Strategic Coach is they have us go through a bunch of different questions or processes. And they're just simple questions in a certain order. And, I've, and we've done these exercises before. But they call it one, an experience transformer. You basically write out like these questions of how you would want to improve the experience. And that's been very helpful for me as I'm setting goals mm -hmm. and I'm also modeling other people. So if you think about it, I learned from Garrett White, I learned from Strategic Coach. Um, Keith Cunningham, I've attended five Keith Cunningham events. I've seen Keith Cunningham twice at Business Mastery 1 and 2 with Tony Robbins. It's not a coincidence they're running, they're teaching 
at the same capacity, but their styles are completely different in what they're teaching on. Um, Keith Cunningham talks about three things from him. One is thinking time. Like, just go out and freaking think. Huh. And, and you actually do this. And I'm teaching a class called Blueprint 2020 uh -huh. uh, on January 4th. And we actually go through a similar, like, style, but just, like, how to think. Most people don't think. They they're, they want to be so busy all the time. That's yeah. one. The second time is what is the right, what is a better question? Because mm. the better questions we get, the better results we're looking for. Got it. So I'm, I've really worked hard at asking better questions. Right. That are thoughtful. Yeah. And the third one is knowing your numbers financially. Holy cow. He has a dashboard of knowing cash flow versus revenue versus expenses that, that it ties in a P&L and a cash flow statement and a balance sheet. Yeah. That it was amazing and it's helped me up my game in business and in life knowing the numbers. And what's interesting is I'm kind of sharing is... I, um, during this last couple of years, I've had a coach that I discontinued before I went to Europe, mm -hmm. but for three and a half years. His name's Dr. Kerry Johnson. I met him at the Utah Association of Mortgage Professional Summit meeting and at end of year rally in 2015. And uh, he was the keynote speaker, and he's this very ener energetic, uh, charismatic guy. I think you've heard him before once yeah. or twice. Yeah. yeah. And here's three things I learned with him, is tracking your stats on your RPC calls weekly. Tell people what RPC, RPC is. RPC is a revenue producing call. Thank you. So anyone that's in production of sales, you gotta track your calls up front. There's, so there's four things. RPC is a revenue producing call. Number two is an opener that's actually finding out more about them. Three is a, is a closing presentation. After you find out about them, you give them options. And then the fourth is the sales. Got it. So as, as you, as a, in a sales process, you either have a two close, two call close or a four call close, just depending on different things in life. But if you're really qualifying people where they are, then you'll know how to get them. Right. The second thing I learned from Dr. Kerry Johnson is utilizing speaking engagements better. Mm -hmm. So I speak probably w once a week when I'm in U town at different organizations about real estate investing. Right. And as I've gotten this feedback of how to make those opportunities better, then I know how to, and I'll share that with you after actually, because I had these amazing results from this last speaking engagement this last week. Nice. Yeah, you're welcome. And then the third thing from Dr. Kerry Johnson is understanding the power of empathy, business with your with your with your internal team. So as you in, in business, the focus of business planning. So for those like I probably invest 35 to 40 hours a at the end of the year this this month yeah. in business planning and personal planning. Nice. For all businesses and for to plan for myself. And I do that because then it's I'm creating the blueprint of my life that I want. Right. Now, what's cool is all these people led to Tony Robbins. Oh, got it. So, like, Doc D Garrett White went to Tony Robbins events years ago. Got it. And, and, and joined Platinum Partners a couple years ago. Uh, Keith Cunningham speaks with Tony Robbins. And I meet all these Tony Robbins people at yeah. Keith Cunningham events. I'm like, who the, who are these guys? Yeah. But I was like, I like it. Like, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, I need more people like this in my life, <laughs> right? Right. Okay. right. Um, and then Dr. Johnson is teaches NLP and different business one on one. And then and then Dan Sullivan. There's this really was respectful. There's a book called The Millionaire Mindset, I believe, by Dean Grazioni. I read it a couple years ago. Oh yeah. It's an excellent book if you haven't read it. Um, but Dean Grazioni gives credit to both Dan Sullivan and Tony Robbins. Huh. So I would say Dean Grazioni is a student of Tony Robbins and Dan Sullivan. Got it. And actually, Dean is in Dan Sullivan's highest tiered coaching program. Got it. So just kind of reinforce. So now that I think about it, I'll probably still do strategic coach. It just reinforces <laughs> like these individuals that we're learning from makes a huge, huge difference, right? Yeah. And then Tony Robbins, which has been super impactful for me is he brings on people that are more experts than he is to teach us how to get better. Right. So I think as we model the people that are 20 to 30% farther than us, then we're gonna get better results. And I would say three things that, which I, long story, what I learned from Tony Robbins. One is he calls it the triad. So it's 80% psychology, 20% strategy. And how, like, how we control or manage, I'm gonna say manage, how we manage our emotions is key to life. Mm -hmm. 
So that's number one. Number two, he shares, and he shares so many freaking things. But life happens for us, not to us. Right. Like, you're doing an excellent job moderating this show. <laughs> Thank you. Because you wanted to be more influential to help other people out, right? Right. So mm -hmm. maybe you getting turned down by the NCAA turn, whatever rules, Yeah. allowed you to do other things like you're doing right now. Right. And maybe you being focused on health will help you live longer versus being inspired to travel for the U. Right. Who knows? Right? Sure, sure. So that's the second thing. Life happens for us, not to us. The third, among so many different things, is like everyone just wants to be loved. Yeah. And he talks about six human needs. Certainty, uncertainty. So certainty, everyone wants, wants like, hey, is, is someone going to show up today? Right, right. Okay? <laughs> uncertainty of variety, which you and I love. Is, yeah. If they don't show up, we'll be okay because yeah. it's us. Yeah, okay? exactly. Now, significance is why we're f why we're filming this is because we love seeing ourselves on TV. Right. Let's just be honest. We're yeah. like, yeah, like cut our hair. You got your hat. Okay? <laughs> but it's but it's based on wanting to give back. Fourth is love and connection. We want to be able to share with other people what we know so that other people can have better lives. Now, here's what's cool: growth. Growing is studying and learning. The more we learn and implement, keys implement, mm -hmm. the better life we're going to have. Yep. So the more we learn and implement, the better life we have. And then contribution is how we're giving back to other people. I love it. And as we have those six human needs, they're all getting fulfilled in different things. Us doing this radio show today, and then it's going to be videoed, and then it's going to be vlogged or YouTubed or other things like that. Yeah. Is because we're giving back to other people to the best of our ability. Right. The bonus Tony Robbins thing, it was really reinforced, and I knew this, but if people are doing the people are doing the best they can based on what they know. Right. So it's our responsibility to let them know how to do things better. Right. I love it. Absolutely. And and you know, I think uh, I, on the first show that we did, I shared how you're one of my mentors. Right. I learned tons from you, and still continue to learn. And um, the whole idea about be giving back to people so they can learn. Uh, I would, Robert Kiyosaki had once said that if somebody's not willing to learn, how can he help them, right? Sure. So as these people set goals, because, you know, if you were to go out and have a million dollar in a briefcase cash, you could walk up to anyone and say, would you like this? Nobody's going to say no. But then if you said, listen, would you like this? And they say, yes, great. I'm going to teach you how to work really hard and smart over the next five years, ten years, so that you can have this most of the people fall off of the desire of wanting that briefcase now. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might want 10 briefcases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to get your first one. You got to get your first one. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't mind, within the, uh, we've got a few minutes left in the show, how can people stay driven? We all want that briefcase, whatever's in that briefcase. For some, it's cash. For some, it's, you know, Whatever it is, whatever's in that yeah. briefcase. But why? Uh, how can we stay driven? Why do so many people, you know, two months, three months into it, fall off? You know, what if you could share? What are you discovering that keeps people driven? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, do you can you see this? Is it? Can you see what it says? I cannot. Is it because you're from your guys from Japan? It, yes, we can't read in Japan. Apparently. That's true. Oh, uh, passion. Is it, is it in Spanish? It was upside down. Oh, it was upside down. Yeah. Sorry. Actually, passion. Funny, funny joke. Passion. So, passion. We need more passion in our life. Yeah. So, if you think about passion, I can make, we can, we banter back and forth all the time because it's based out of love, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not like saying, hey, let's go with this. Yeah. It's, it's because we both respect and we can, like, have, not take ourselves so freaking serious. Right. So, passion. So, I think, like, uh, a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk, who we both love following and, and learning yep. from, because he's super raw and he just, yeah. he's no BS. Right. Is, he wrote a book called, he's written a lot of books. Um, actually, I'm going to share this real quick to answer your question. Yeah. For any of you guys that are listening to this that are wanting to reevaluate their lives, I call this a prescription of life reevaluation, and I would listen or read these books in this order. Number one is, uh, what's Gary Vee's first book? Crush yeah. It. Crush It, that's right. So I would read the book Crush It, and I like the Audible because he goes off script, and I'd read it in this order. Second, I would listen to Grant Car Cardone's 10X. Mm -hmm. Because it'll help you think bigger. And then third, I would listen to Darren Hardy's um, The Compound Effect. And in 2016, 
those are the first three books I read after I read a book called Loving What Is, uh -huh. which was my reading assignment from Wake Up Warrior in December of 2015. Uh -huh. And as I do real estate coaching with people or consulting, those are the first three books. When people are like, I'm not sure what I want to do the rest of my life, I share with them to read those. And it helps them light up some passion. Got so it. I don't expect everyone, and I, I, I don't think, I don't expect everyone to love what they do all day long for their for the for their career, but they can really like what they do, yeah. and then they can have a side hustle with passion. Yeah. And as if you think about where you want to be in life, I don't care if you're an extrovert or an introvert, but model the other people that you want to be with, and we all need connection. My friends that are reclusive more recently, when I talk to them, are not as happy. Uh -huh. The friends who are still interacting with people, and I don't care if they're changing from different things like salsa dancing to real estate investing classes to retreats in Moab or whatever they're doing. Right. Like taking a, t a cooking class. Right. The cool thing is they're still interacting with other humans, and we all need that connection in life. So as we have the passion that we're looking for, and we write out our goals or outcomes... And here's a cool thing. I'm going to challenge everyone on here. Write out 10 things that you have accomplished this last year because that helps you with gratitude, mm. both personally and professionally. And if you write out 10 things that have happened that are positive, then you use that to like reflect on your life, and then it will help you grow. Now, I, I wish I could, I'm doing this right now, give everyone yeah. passion or confidence in their lives, but that's going to have to be an internal thing. Yep. But I think as you find that, then you can wake up every morning and you're like, you're grateful to be alive. Because life is short. Had a friend pass away three years ago in an ATV accident, broke his neck. Your friend died in a snowmobiling accident. Yep. Not sure how. Had a friend commit suicide about eight weeks ago now, give or take. Life is short. And my friend, uh, I talked to yesterday, his grandma was 100 years old. Wow. Just passed away this last week. And he's, I'm like, dude, how are you doing? Because she, she's like 100. She's like, we're still sad. I'm like, you're, you're right. But 100 years, that's as long as you want to live. That's so right. I think it's important to have our passion in life. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Matt, for sharing all of that valuable information. Um, how can people, if they, you know, you, you talked about January 4th having the blueprint. How can people get in contact with you if they want to uh, take advantage of that opportunity? You bet. So you can go to MJA, MJA, real, like I'm real, consulting.com, MJA, real consulting.com, and you can click in under events, there's blueprint. And then also, you and I have the privilege to serve for the Utah Valley Real Estate Investors Association in 2020. I'll be serving as the president, and you're going to be the vice president. That's right. And there's meetings on the sec the third Thursday of the month in Utah County, and you can look up uvria.com, and that gives you guys different opportunities to hear us be able to give back to you with different investing strategies. Wonderful. Excellent. Well, hopefully everybody took a lot of notes. You know, goal setting is important, but crushing the goals is even better. So thanks again, Matt, for joining us You're today. Welcome. This Thank is you. the show, Utah Home Sweet Home. If you missed any of it, definitely check our social media. These are being filmed, and, and we will put this back on the Internet for you guys so you can take advantage of it. All right. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. Thank you.